The Assam Tribune, 19th August, Wednesday, 2020. Naga Peace Talk. The Union government has been engaged in talks with the Naga group since 2019 for the settlement of Naga political issues. The key demand of Naga groups has been a greater Nagaland sovereign statehood that is redrawing of boundaries to bring all Naga inhabited areas in the Northeast under one administrative umbrella. It includes various parts of Arunachal Pradesh, Assam, Manipur, Myanmar as well. The government is also discussing the matter to other stakeholder states to arrive at an amicable solution. Gas leakage at Bagzan. The Bagzan well is a purely gas producing well in Tinsukia district and is at an aerial distance of 900 meters from the Debru Saikwa National Park. It has been drilled by Oil India Limited since 2006. Natural gas is a mix of propane, methane, propylene, and other gases. Ashok Lavasa resigned his election commission and joined ADB as vice president. Election commissioner Ashok Lavasa was next in line to head the poll panel, resigned on Tuesday to join the Philippines based Asian Development Bank as vice president next month. Asian Development Bank is a regional development bank established on 19th December 1966 which is headquartered in Manila, Philippines. ADB aims to promote social and economic development in Asia. The ADB was modeled closely on the World Bank and has a similar weighted voting system. India was a founding member of the Asian Development Bank in 1966 and is now the bank's fourth largest shareholder and top borrower. New BSF DZP Rakesh Astana. He was former CBI Special Director. The Border Security Force is a border guarding force of India. It was established in 1965. It is a paramilitary force charged with guarding India's land border during peacetime and preventing transnational crime. It is under the administrative control of Ministry of Home Affairs. It currently stands as a world's largest guarding force. Clause 6. Three major communities, Bengali-speaking Muslims, the Bengali Hindus, and the Gurkhas, perceived to be migrants in Assam, have expressed concerns over the recommendations of the High Powers Committee on the implementation of Clause 6 of the Assam Accord of 1985. Clause 6 states constitutional, legislative, and administrative safeguards, as may be appropriate, shall be provided to protect, preserve, and promote the cultural, social, linguistic identity and heritage of the Assamese people. Signed between the Union government and leaders of the ASU, All Assam Students Union, in 1985, the Assam Accord came at the end of a six year long hesitation demanding the expulsion of illegal immigrants from Bangladesh. Arunodai Scheme. The Assam state government is all set to roll out Arunodai Scheme from October 2, 2020, with an aim to provide financial assistance to around 17 lakh families in the state. Under the scheme, an amount of Rs. 830 per month will be given to the eligible 17 lakh families to buy the essential items of food. Another scheme will be the largest direct benefit transfer or DBT scheme of Assam, which will benefit 15 to 17,000 families per assembly constituency. Satyapal Malik becomes the new governor of Meghalaya. The governor's appointment, his powers, and everything related to the office of the governor has been discussed under Article 153 to 162 of the Indian Constitution. The governor acts as in dual capacity as the constitutional head of the state and as a representative. Article 157 and Article 158 of the Constitution of India specify eligibility requirements for the post of governor. They are as follows. A governor must be 35 years and shouldn't be a member of Parliament of State Legislature. He shouldn't hold any office of profit. The term of governor's office is normally five years but it can be terminated earlier by the President on the advice of Council of Ministers headed by the Prime Minister. His dismissal doesn't require any valid grounds. Production Link Incentive Scheme Global electronic giants are set to expand the presence in India under the Production Link Incentive Scheme for making mobile phones, 
and are certain other specified electronic components. Proposals for Rs. 12 lakh crore have been received under the new scheme to boost electronic manufacturing. The scheme will give incentives between 4 to 6 percent to the electronic companies, provided that they manufacture mobile phones and other electronic and nano-electronic components like transistors, diodes, tyrosins, etc. in India. It will attract big foreign investments in the sector while also encouraging domestic mobile phone makers to expand their units and presence in India. MSME, the micro, small and medium enterprises are classified as part of MSME Act 2006. The definition of MSME has been revised very recently. Earlier, the definition included only investment in plant and machinery or equipment and the investment limit and the MSME classifications were divided into manufacturing and service enterprises. Under the revised MSME classification, both manufacturing and services are clubbed into one and now investment and annual turnover are taken into consideration. For micro enterprises, investment should be less than rupees 1 crore and turnover should be less than rupees 5 crore. For small enterprises, investment should be less than rupees 10 crore and turnover should be less than rupees 50 crore. For medium one, investment should be less than rupees 20 crore and turnover should be less than rupees 100 crore. Thank you.